Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about a chronic suppurative otitis media. It is a persistent inflammation of the middle ear with purulent perforation of the tympanic membrane and chronic secretions for more than six weeks. If you have any questions about the tympanic membrane or the anatomy and physiology of the ear, you can go back and watch my other videos also. So what is the clinical presentation of chronic suppurative otitis media? Well, it's accompanied by conductive hearing loss, which is usually seen in the hearing test, and also chronic otorrhea, so secretion of the ear. It's often malodorous, and it can be, or it is purulent in chronic pur uh, suppurative otitis media. So it's often yellow-greenish in color, and it smells bad, usually. As it is an inflammatory process, it also is often seen together with fever and it's often painless, so it can be quite difficult to diagnose. There are also a few complications. It can lead to the destruction and necrosis of different bones, majorly seen in the long leg of the incus, but also the other of the ossicles and rarely but sometimes also even of the cranial bones. Also there is seen cholesteatoma which is a growth of squamous epithelium of the external acoustic meatus into the middle ear and a kind of polyp which is protruding from the eardrum to the outside. So a defect in the eardrum with white debris in the ear canal and the enzymes of the cholesteatoma can further destroy the bony structures within the ear. Also other complications are disturbances of the out outflow of secretions, so a kind of clump can develop within the middle ear or the exit to the external acoustic meatus. Also a bacterial superinfection, for example with Pseudomonas aeruginosa, is often seen. Then the destruction of the ossicles, which I mentioned before, but also brain abscesses, meningitis, mastoid abscess or labyrinthitis can be seen. There are different risk factors or ideological reasons for the development of chronic suppurative otitis media. Often it happens after acute otitis media when it's not properly treated or the treatment was not completed. Then a closure of the Eustachian tube which leads to the oropharynx and also mechanical, thermic or chemical damage or any kind of trauma to the tympanic membrane, no matter if it's by acid or extreme heat changes or, for example, if something is inserted into the ear that can damage the tympanic membrane and so lead to entry of bacteria into the ear. Also craniofacial malformations like, for example, Down syndrome or cleft lip or the Cri du Chat syndrome can be predisposing factors for the development of this chronic otitis, but also exacerbations of upper respiratory tract infections can lead to digging around of bacteria in the area and uh, penetration into the middle ear, where then this otitis can develop. So how do we treat a patient with chronic suppurative otitis media? So at first for two weeks is given fluoroquinolone, a kind of antibiotic, or another kind of antiseptica, which can improve the outflow of the secretions as the chronic inflammation is tried to be reduced with medication, but sometimes it's necessary to perform surgery. So at first is given ciprofloxacin, another antibiotic, as ear drops for two weeks. And after that, the surgery is performed. Or granulation tissue, so the introduction of squamous epithelium into the middle ear, and also the cholesteatoma are removed. And after the surgery, ciprofloxacin ear drops are given again, this time in combination with dexamethasone drops, for another 7 to 10 days to fight the inflammation. Then I draw, drew a scheme where you can see this whole process and how it's kind of a cycle of repeating events. So I want to start on the left middle side where we have irritation of the middle ear which leads to inflammation of the middle ear. Here we usually speak still 
of acute otitis media, but this can lead to mucosal edema. This edema in turn can lead to ulcerations and epithelial breakdown as the inflammation persists. And in an attempt to heal this inflammatory process, granulation tissue is formed. The problem is that this granulation tissue again irritates the middle ear, which brings us back to the start of the circle. So it's going again and again and again, and it's a process which by itself usually doesn't get better and requires anti-inflammatory and antibacterial treatment. I hope everything about pathophysiology and about the whole process of this chronic suppurative otitis media was clear. It was one of different form of otitis and if you liked the video I would be very happy if you could subscribe.